So a ton of people who play team fight tactics want to become pro players, want to become pro content creators, streamers, or YouTubers. And what if I told you that TFT is actually one of the easiest video games to actually go pro in? I'll explain more later, but first, let me discuss how we do this. Essentially, there are two ways. You could become either a competitive pro or a content creator. I will cover whether it is worth it to go full-time in TFT, how sustainable the career path is, how much money you can expect to make, and to give you the best options to consider going full-time. No matter what game you're playing, the path to pro is going to be pretty difficult. It all comes down to sustainability. What is sustainability? Well, the easiest way to measure it is with money. If you're in that point of your life where you have a ton of savings already, or you are able to work a full-time job while maintaining world-class skill levels in teamfight tactics, by all means, go for it. However, I know a lot of competitive players, they are broke students. They are like maybe not living on their own already and they're probably not making that much money compared to some of the scenarios I listed out before. So if you are that person, what can you do? To be honest, even if you're truly the best teamfight tactics player, it probably isn't worth it to do it right now, but that could change in the future. If you're in school and you're pursuing a high demand career path, such as engineering, finance, or law, you probably don't want to go into TFT if money is your primary motivation. With all that being said, life is more about than just purely money, but if you are working like a minimum wage job, the options become a lot more competitive with each other. Of course, the best way to do this is what I said before, where you just have enough money to do whatever you want throughout the course of your life. But obviously life is not like that for like 99.9% .9 of the people. So let's take a look at some TFT prize pools if you want to go the competitive route. So TFT is pretty different from other esports titles. I wouldn't even consider TFT quite an esport quite yet because there is almost a non-existent tournament scene apart from China and Worlds. So the world circuit is pretty region dependent. For example, Europe has had tournaments with zero cash prizes, while the Chinese world qualifications actually gave you more money than winning the world championship. For this video, we are going to focus on English speaking players because that is most of what my viewers on the channel are. And as for the actual championships in TFT, we have around two world sets per year and essentially each of them pay out on average 11,250 per player so far. Obviously this could change in the future with more sponsorships. So if you qualify for worlds twice you can make over 20 grand a year on average. Keep in mind there are limited spots per region so you can't expect to just make it to the world qualifiers every single time or even the world championships. Second off, People have said that the reason why the TFT esports scene is underdeveloped is because of the age of the game. But if I look at the release date of TFT, it is July 26, 2019, which means it has almost been out for two years, which actually is a really long time in the gaming space where games typically don't even last that long. If we compare this to the prize pools two years into other games, even in the past, like way back when, like 10 or five years ago, uh, you could see that their prize pools for their championships have been much larger and they also held more frequent tournaments outside of the officially sanctioned tournaments. So with that in mind, it's not like TFT is a small game. In fact, it's one of the most watch played games right now. And we also have to consider that in the past, there was like almost zero gaming tournament infrastructure, whereas now we have a ton of them. There's so many different websites that all host tournaments and pretty much provide a lot of tools for tournament organizers to kind of uh, really push the stake forward. My first guess as to why the tournament scene is not that developed is because of the global travel restrictions that have been in place. But that is not all bad news because since everyone is staying at home for the past year at least, it means that there is a lot more viewership on social media platforms. Before I dive into the crux of this, I want to make it abundantly clear that I do not think it is up to the developer to develop the tournament scene. Uh, but I do think that they greatly benefit from it and it's something worth exploring because if there is a tournament scene, a lot more players are going to be playing your game, a lot more people are going to be engaged with your game, and eventually that should lead to a lot more sales in the long term, theoretically. However, that isn't always the case, but in most games that is normally how it plays out. However, I feel that right now, tournaments hosted by both Riot Games or third-party tournament organizers, one of three things are happening. They are either ripping off the players, which I don't think is true. They are either getting ripped off by potential sponsors. Or the third scenario is they don't actually know how much their viewership is worth. I guess the third point kind of ties into point number two, uh, but I kind of want to make a small distinction between the two. So as a content creator for specifically Teamfight Tactics, I am familiar with a lot of rates for advertising. And the prize pools that I've seen so far for the viewership that they get do not quite equate to that number. I feel that a lot of this is due to the lack of a spectator client, which was kind of hinted at to be coming in set five, but we are in set five right now and we don't really see it on the time horizon any bit more than we have in the past. 
So with that in mind, I think without a spectator mode, it's hard for tournament organizers to really go dive deep into TFT because they don't have like that great of production value without the spectator mode and they limit a lot of their options for sponsorships because they're not able to present the best show that they can on their own channels. And this leads to people just going into other streamers channels to watch the tournaments instead, which is a good thing for the streamers, but not so much for the tournament organizers and therefore not so great for the tournament prize pools. So hopefully once they add spectator mode, hopefully this does drive tournament organizers to take TFT more seriously which could lead to more prize pool, which makes it more worth it to go like full time in TFT in the competitive circuit. So now that we've talked about the whole tournament prize pool structures, I wanna go back to sustainability and like essentially money you can make from TFT and whether you are able to live your life while doing it because this question is pretty loaded because everyone does have different quality of life expectations and monetary expectations. And you also have to keep in mind that for most situations you can't rely on like actually using tournament winnings as like your salary because it is so inconsistent in a game such as TFT where really on random days you just outperform yourself or underperform yourself all the time. I just want to note that that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as there are a lot of tournaments to even out in the long run. Therefore, to truly go pro, I think you need to turn towards content creation whether you want to be solely competitive focused or if you want to do a mix of both. I know in a lot of other games, people who are solely focused on competitive, they're still able to drive a lot of content as long as they remain at the top of their game. So it isn't really a question of how entertaining you are in order to test your viability of going full time in TFT. Uh, as long as you're really good, you're going to be doing fine. However, keeping that rank is going to be pretty difficult as we're about to discover. So in terms of content creation, right now, the biggest social media platforms for gaming are probably Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And no, I'm not gonna count Facebook in this because I just haven't seen anyone do well on Facebook. All I've seen so far is people who go to Facebook because they get offered a ton of money. So let's start with Twitch. If you do stream on Twitch, I think if you reach around like 750 concurrent viewers, and assuming these viewers are from countries with high disposable income, such as the United States or Germany or the UK, you will be able to sustain yourself if you take on maybe like one sponsor a month along with whatever you get from streaming. If you do YouTube, you'll probably need around 25,000 subscribers uh, with frequent videos around five times per week with viewers from, again, high disposable income countries. And you'd probably want to take on a sponsor once a month as well. But for YouTube, you probably want to take on two to three sponsors per month as well. So if you want to do Instagram, you'll probably want at least 50,000 followers and you'll want to take on pretty much every single sponsorship you could get your hands on because Instagram isn't directly monetizable and you'll probably want to create a merch shop that is relevant to your brand. Lastly, for Twitter and TikTok, these two social media platforms aren't that great for monetization, but they are great for building an audience. So I do recommend if you are new, uh, start with these two because you're able to transfer your viewership from Twitter and TikTok into other platforms and then monetize there. Notice how so far in the how to go pro section, I did not talk about coaching. And this is a key mistake I think a lot of people who are on like the cusp of like going full time are making right now. TFT coaching is probably the biggest waste of time you can do because even if you're charging like $200 an hour, I still don't think it's worth it because I'd rather use that hour to spend on my brand to pretty much ensure that I get a higher viewership and just rely on that instead of doing coaching because a coaching session is a one-time deal. Once you do it, everything during that hour is completely wasted. You might as well have just been like watching TV that whole time and then just like subtract $200 from your bank account. It really doesn't change anything for the future because you need to spend every waking moment working on your brand, working on your stream, working on your channel, whatever it is, in order to solidify income for the long term. So even if like working an hour doesn't actually equate to making $200 an hour, which it doesn't like streaming on Twitch with 750 viewers does not make you $200 an hour. It's still worth it to do the stream to build your brand. So I did mention sponsorships before from Twitch and YouTube and Instagram. Let me just make a brief rant about them. So people have been complaining about some sponsors on my channel or having like too many advertisements on a YouTube channel. So I understand that some of these can be annoying, but I know a lot of viewers don't really mind advertisements for the type of content that I make. If we look at creators from other games, uh, you can see that they hide a lot of their best content, such as their tier list under paywall, such as Patreon. And of course I could do the same, but I really don't want to. I'd rather give all my best content out for free and just do it through ads. So let's say you hate ads, but you are willing to pay to get rid of ads. Uh, well, there's a very simple solution. I do recommend doing YouTube Premium. This is not sponsored by YouTube in any way. Like I honestly use YouTube Premium myself and it saves me a ton of time. 
and it pretty much just makes my whole viewing experience that much more worth it and i still get revenue from youtube premium so it is pretty much the best of both worlds if you are going to complain about ads if you're not like use an ad block or something like i, I really don't care I know that like 95% of you already understand this because we are on YouTube. This is how the platform has worked for over like 15 years already. Um, but some people still haven't gotten the memo yet. So I just want to put that out there. And I know that there are even some people who are happy when I receive a sponsor. So I am, am truly thankful about that. And I do appreciate all the support. So pretty much like all the OGs who do that. I know who you are. You know who you are. But I'd still want to address the 5% who like do a lot of hate on some of my like sponsored content because they're like, two very simple solutions. One, I put chapters on all my sponsored content, so you could literally just skip it by clicking on the chapters anyways. And two, for like the dedicated videos, you could always just open them up, like it and leave instead of like disliking and then leaving like a hateful comment because literally that's how YouTube works. But for the 5% who didn't know, now you know. And if you spend a lot of time on YouTube, like honestly, like YouTube premium is really worth it. I personally have the family plan and it honestly like saves me money in the long term because I don't have to watch ads on any video I watch. You also get access to YouTube music so you don't need to buy like a Spotify account, for example. So I think it's like super worth it, but honestly, it's up to you guys. I'm not like trying to pitch this because I literally don't get anything from it because this is not sponsored by YouTube. But yeah, pretty much like I make it very easy for you guys to like skip the sponsored content if you don't care. But for the people who do want to support even more, definitely like check out whatever product I am showcasing and use whatever link I put in the description because honestly it really helps me a lot but enough of that rant I just wanted to like clear that up because I know before like I haven't really addressed this but let's get back to how sustainable pro TFT is so of course you can combine all the options we talked about before you could be on Twitter TikTok Instagram Twitch and YouTube but honestly no one's got time for that you could really only focus on maybe one or two platforms at a time uh, in most cases like I'm sure there are some people who have done growing on like five different platforms before, but that isn't really the route that I've seen succeed for most people. So if you do only like one of the options that I mentioned before, and keep in mind, like getting to those milestones is pretty difficult. Uh, you will definitely be above like the poverty line. Will you be above like median annual income in the US? Uh, maybe sometimes it depends how much you optimize your channel for money. Um, but you'll definitely be able to play TFT and keep doing it until either you like blow up or find a new opportunity. So if you are truly dedicated and really confident that you'll be able to go full time into TFT, I do recommend it. I think one of those milestones that I listed above is something to really aim for. And each option is good for different types of people, which I'll get into a little bit later. So short note, many high level TFT players go to like very prestigious schools and have very lucrative career paths. Uh, after they graduate college. So if you're one of those people who are like a computer science major, and let's take a look at the Google salaries for their first year. And we can see here that you should probably work for around like five years at the, one of those companies and then come back into whatever pro game you wanna do. Uh, it's just my recommendation because uh, it's hard to say no to that much money if you do have like a lot of student debt and you kind of don't have like savings from before because you're like a freaking college student. Um, just one note there. So let's go back to the original question. Like, should you go pro in TFT? And the short answer would probably be no, uh, but there are ways to make this a lot easier and more viable. So without streaming or any type of content creation, it's pretty impossible to go full time in TFT just based on tournament earnings alone. Also, there are people who want to go full time in TFT, but aren't really like competitively inclined. And the good news is that there is room for all types of people, as I said before. So I think like the three things that you need to like blow up on social media or like not blow up, just like do well on social media is be really, really good at whatever it is. So that's the competitive people. Uh, be really funny or be really attractive. So if you are trying to go pro in the competitive sense, you really only need to focus on one. If you're trying to, however, like branch out, you'll probably need one of the other two that I mentioned before. And you do need to keep in mind that like being extremely, extremely good isn't always as sustainable as you think. So a lot of people, they hit like diamond and then they're like, oh, I can make it to masters. And then they do that. And then once you hit masters, you're like, oh, let me make it to grandmasters. And a lot of people can do that. And then you branch it out even more. You're like, oh, let me hit challenger. And like some people do that too. And then once you're challenger, you're like, oh, maybe I could go into like top 25. And then some people go do that. And then after that, they're like, oh, let me hit rank one. And some people do actually end up doing that, which is actually crazy. However, once you get higher and higher and higher, it gets more and more difficult because there are only so many spots. There can only be really one rank one player. And right now, if you are the competitively minded person, you really can only grow your social media presence if you are the number one player. 
and sustain it for like a month. But if you do do that, like you will be probably fine for at least a little while. So with that in mind, let's go into some options on going pro now that we briefly introduced that. So there are multiple paths as we talked about before, each caters to different types of people, each caters to a different skill set. For example, for me, like full disclosure, I still work full time, but I still do like a lot of YouTube stuff and website stuff. Uh, but my case is a little different, so I'll kind of like take myself out of the equation for now. But the reason why I did choose YouTube is because I can't play video games for like eight hours straight for four days in a row. And that's kind of the skill set you need to have if you want to go full time in streaming, as that is probably the most popular option in gaming. But if you are trying to be like the very best player, if you're doing the competitive route, uh, let's first start off by defining what being the best at the game is. We'll also talk about like how it will help you go pro. So essentially, for the competitive route, there are two ways that I recommend, and it is either winning the world championship, which is very difficult, obviously, or get rank one in your region, which is still difficult, but much more manageable. So if you do one of these two things, you will likely be able to start a stream. And there may be like five or six people who could do this every set, one being the world champion, and maybe like two to five players, depending on whatever region you're in, are able to go full time in streaming or other sorts of content creation. I will say first off though, that like the competitive route in TFT is much easier than any other other game out there right now. Uh, the main reason is is because a lot of the best players aren't even trying in the pro circuit right now because the prize pools are so low. So what you can do if you can afford to, if you are really gung-ho about being really good at TFT is try your hardest right now and put whatever extra effort you can right now because it is going to be worth a lot more than it is in the future because in the future you're going to have a lot more competition. Right now the competition is pretty sparse in terms of the competitive space because again, a lot of the best players, they don't even care about making it to Worlds right now. Obviously, that still doesn't make it easy, but like now is just the best time and I just want to let you guys know that. Once you fill one of the two criteria I listed above, you can turn on your stream and it doesn't matter if you're using like a 10 year old laptop or a brand new PC because no one cares about your stream quality. They're just there to see some good gameplay. And as long as you can provide that without like too much lag, uh, you're gonna be good to go. You have like a laptop mic and still do well. So really don't pay attention to anything else except for being good at TFT. And then once you make it there, you kind of decide whether you need like additional gear in order to enhance the viewer experience. So you guys might think that like, how do you know that this will work? Well, first off, there was like a top 25 player who asked me uh, like, how do I go pro in TFT? How do I grow my stream? And I literally told them like, just go hit rank one and maintain it for like a couple weeks or if not a month, if you can. And that's pretty much what he did. And he grew their stream overnight after he hit rank one because he got a lot of raids. And he now averages around like 500 concurrent viewers per stream, which obviously isn't like amazing, but he's almost at that mark, which I denoted before. So there are probably around like 20 people I've witnessed that have done this throughout my entire like lifespan in TFT. They all started the same way. They hit rank one, they turned on their stream, they got like 1,000 to 3,000 viewers depending on a bunch of different other factors. And the only downside of this path is that it is pretty difficult to maintain because the rank one buff only affects one person at a time. So once you lose it, like no one cares about you anymore unless you are either attractive or entertaining, and that is that. So out of the 20 players I talked about before that I've seen have this phenomenon happen, uh, maybe like three of them were able to transition into a sustainable viewership afterwards. Uh, so views are pretty fleeting if you take the competitive route, if you don't really branch out. So definitely like if you ever do hit rank one, definitely take advantage of it and try to get people into other different platforms as well. And don't have it like be completely focused on TFT gameplay unless you really are that good and are able to sustain rank one for like months on end, uh, which is pretty difficult to do. So let's go ahead and try to solve this by going into the other requirements for content creation. And this will also cover people who want to go full time in TFT and are not like super, super good at the game, which is like the 99.999% of people. So if we look at other games and content creators in other games, we'll see that like a lot of other creators, like they never hit rank one, they never really place that highly in tournaments, but there are a ton of content creators who are just there and have a pretty big following for just like existing essentially. So let's get into what existing exactly means. So I found like five traits that you can kind of use in order to achieve this. And again, this isn't a comprehensive list. There are a lot more options you can have to make it on like a social media platform. But the ones I've found most common are one being good at the game, which is what I've talked about before, and then turning on your stream. And then the second is providing a lot of entertainment value. And I think like meme channels 
are one of like the easiest ways to grow on YouTube in the TFT space, especially since TFT is all about those like really high fee moments and like those one out of a million moments. Uh, next up is providing educational content. And then the fourth option is being attractive. And then the fifth option is creating a unique community. So what is creating a unique community? Well, some people do it through like Twitch emotes. And one opportunity that I think that anyone who is watching this right now can really take advantage of is catering to mobile players. Because I've been on every single possible social media channel and no one in TFT creates any content that's catered to mobile players. And I think that's a shame because mobile is one of the biggest like player bases in TFT. And if you look on the app store, it's always really highly up there. Mobile isn't even out in China yet, as far as I know. And once that happens, like there's just going to be a huge influx of mobile players that will want mobile targeted content. So I do think if you are like not good at the game, if you are not attractive, if you're not funny, if you're not educational, you could just grow just from targeting a certain demographic, which is mobile players. So how do you do this? Well, like TikTok and YouTube shorts are probably the way to go. And obviously you could memeify them. You could just do like new segments. There are a lot of different options there, but creating a unique community, such as creating a space for mobile TFT players in content creation is one way to do it, which I think is like really underrated. You might be asking like, why haven't I done it? Well, I just don't like playing on my phone and I am also too lazy. So in this day and age, there are like so many different ways to grow your platform if you create engaging content. And obviously for gaming, Twitch is the most straightforward as we talked about before. YouTube is a great option as well. And then like lastly, you wanna follow it up with TikTok, Instagram, and other social media platforms. So here's what I recommend you do for each platform. So if you do wanna make it big on Twitch, just hit rank one and turn on your stream. This is difficult, but success is almost guaranteed after you hit rank one. On YouTube, just make meme clips. This is a very low barrier to entry. You essentially just hire a video editor or do it yourself if you know how and just compile all the top like viral clips that are out already and put them in one video. Or you could make your own. What I recommend is going into the PBE environment and then doing like 1v0s or 2v0s to create very unique situations or just play in a game of eight players that you already know and are friends with and try to set up crazy stuff there because that's essentially how a lot of people do it. Uh, if you are trying to make it on TikTok, like again, meme clips, is what you want to do. It's the same instructions as above. Uh, Instagram, so Instagram is pretty interesting because this is the easiest way to grow any sort of social media platform. All you really have to do is repost whatever's on the top of Reddit every single day. And that's literally all you have to do. Like anyone can do this. Again, why haven't I done this? Well, I'm just too lazy and I don't really care for those types of channels, um, but literally like anyone can do this. So you watching the video now, you could literally start an Instagram just repost everything that's already popular and offer zero content that's original or creative and you will be able to grow a social media following uh, just based off of that. It's actually insane how this is allowed still. But of course, there are many other approaches to grow on each platform, but those are the ones that I think are easiest on each. And then let's finally like sum this up. Like, should you guys go pro in TFT? Well, if you really enjoy the game, like definitely go for it because if it happens, it happens. If not, like hopefully you still have some sort of fallback. However, don't like grief your life trying to go pro in like a video game, because at the end of the day, it is that it's just a game. And if you have like a very promising career, don't like throw away 20 years of your life or like a one out of 10,000 or 100,000 type of opportunity. So essentially, like unless playing TFT is your absolute dream and you would regret it if you did not go full time in it, whether it is in the competitive sense, if it's in the educational sense, if it is in the entertainment realm, or if you're just like really, really attractive, like don't go pro in TFT if you're giving up a 200K job outside of college. Like the lower your salary becomes, the more worth it it is to go pro. But if you're making like minimum wage, the equation actually gets really interesting. I actually recommend trying to go pro or trying to uh, make some sort of hustle in some other way other than the minimum wage job. And essentially, like if you are very dedicated in content creation and you have some of the core skills or assets that I talked about before, like definitely try going for it if like your career prospects aren't that great. But for a lot of the like top competitive players or they're about to make like 100K in a bad scenario, I, I don't really recommend it. So unless you are like unemployed, got like literally nothing on the pathway to life, 
Uh, definitely do try to go pro in TFT based on one of the methods I stated above or find your own way because that's going to be even less competition. So that means you hopefully have like a higher success rate. So I just realized after making this video that it was kind of like a waste of this video. I spent like four hours writing this article and like two hours recording this or whatever. Uh, and then I have to like send it to my editor and like we already knew the answer. Don't go pro in a freaking video game. But like, if you really do want to, the chance of success in TFT is so much higher than any other game title because there's just like zero competition right now. And I think that's like really, really interesting. In terms of YouTube, I really didn't have any competitors till maybe like this set. This is the best time to do it essentially. And with like no one catering to mobile audiences, like that is probably the biggest way or easiest way to grow on any platform is just by catering to mobile users. Uh, lucky for you, the platforms I mentioned before, YouTube Shorts and TikTok, like those are literally made for people on their phone. Like TikTok is not made to be used on desktop. So you're already like, single out your demographic so easily that it's cheating. So yeah, we already knew the answer. TFT doesn't pay much. Content creation is a lottery. Not really. It's kind of like a lottery that you could kind of affect. Um, but only a few people make it in the content creation space. So don't drop out of college to do this unless you just like really don't care about future prospects in your life. And that is pretty much the video. Thanks so much for watching. I guess like and subscribe for more so I could go full time because I am still working full time. Even though I like technically don't need to, I still do it anyways because like I have a decent career so I'm not an idiot. Um, so yeah, that, that's it. I'll see you guys later.